All right, so early on in my life, I was very confused. Um, people would say, slow down. In my mind, I was going super slow. It was fine. People would say, spit it out. I didn't have anything in my, my mouth. I wasn't eating anything. <laughs> like, I actually stopped eating candy because of the spit it out. I thought that that was something that, that, that was going on. And then in fourth grade at uh, uh, Chicago Public Schools, it became incredibly apparent what, what, what was going on. There was a kid that had cut the line. I went up to him to tell him that it wasn't fair. And he turned around to me and told me, he said, knock that effing thing right out of my mouth. And I said, oh, um, this is a very serious uh, problem. Um, I'm, I'm, I am not like everybody else. I'm completely different. I'm an outsider. Um, I don't belong. Uh, I, Angelo, said, you may not control all of the events that happen to you, but you can d d d decide to not be reduced by them. And I was reducing myself. We, we, did, we did, didn't have any money, we didn't have any speech therapy, we didn't have any AIS. Um, I didn't have anybody in my life who, I mean of course outside my family, but anybody in my life who saw me. Um, and it got dark, and it got dark pretty freaking fast. Um, I had huge anger issues. I was getting into a lot of fights. I wouldn't sleep at night. I would hit myself in the mouth all the time because I thought if I hit myself in the mouth, it would stop it from happening. Then I would be uh, super exhausted all day at school, which would make it worse, and it would go on and on. It was a very bad spiral, and I was going on a bad path. Uh, sorry, pretty fast. So my dad uh, was very concerned about, like I was getting these fights, I had to stutter, I was angry, I was gonna go to a pretty bad high school in Chicago, and we moved uh, for school out to, out to, sorry, California. We get out to California, and uh, I'm this kid from Chicago, from the streets, I had to stutter, I'm angry, I'm ready to go, and I'm like, let's go, and everybody's like, what the heck? hell is the matter with you? Um, and <laughs> so, so I was like, again, I was anxious, I was depressed, I didn't get out of bed, uh, I felt totally alone. Um, I remember that in high school I used to eat my lunch down in the, in the basement, totally alone. And as I was preparing the speech, I thought about it. There were other kids in the basement, too, who also felt alone. And we didn't speak to each other. And I never thought that was weird until just now. I was like, like, <laughs> like I actually had some friends down there if I just would have said, hey. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so I uh, go ahead and, it, 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 like, I would say the worst thing about it, which, which you know, um, is how little people expected of me. There were no expectations. It was like, oh, that's a kid that stutters in the corner who eats his lunch in the basement. And, and, and I just, there was something inside of me that said, like, I got a lot more to prove. Like, these people have such low expectations of me. And that really just kind of stuck with me every day. Like, you just think I'm this kid in the basement who stutters. And, 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 and I kind of, add into those expectations by getting straight Fs to start out my high school career. Um, and, and like I got straight Fs, Dad, I'm sure you remember, because um, uh, uh, I, got, I got called into the office and this old man behind the desk who purported to be a quote unquote guidance counselor told me that going to high school is not for everybody. <laughs> high school, he didn't say college, he said high school. And he said, I should consider getting my GED and going into annual labor. 
And I, I had spent a summer actually being in annual labor tying rebar, and as bad as it was to have a stutter as a kid, it was much worse tying rebar. And that was not something I wanted to do. And I came home that day, and I was scared to death because I had, I think it was like Fs, it was like all Fs and a D and a C and then an A in uh, French, even though I never went to the class once. <laughs> but the French teacher just gave everybody A's. <laughs> she was a friend of my mom's from the gym or something. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, and I'm scared to death of what's going to happen. You know, my dad at the time, you know, he could get a little angry sometimes. And, uh, uh, and, and I came home early, and the report card was sent in the mail, and it was sitting there. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to take it, and I'm going to hide it. And my dad had already seen it. He had opened it. And on the, le like on the report card, he had wrote to my mom, we have a serious problem here. And now I'm really scared. And, and my dad comes home, and he gives me a hug and tells me that he loves me. And <laughs> this speech is a little longer than I thought. Um, uh, and then I become friends w w with a guy named Travis Hanauer, six foot six, kind of going with the whole team in the room today. Uh, he, he was the best point guard in the country. He was my only friend for four years. But after me with the guidance counselor, after me with my dad, I said, you can be angry at the world and get straight Fs and hurt yourself and your family, or you can be angry at the world and get straight A's and become Orange County Athlete of the Year and, and go play the football team at Yale. And from that moment on, me and Travis Hanauer worked our butts off. In school, in the library, I started getting all A's. I, I was starting on the basketball team, on the football team, on the volleyball team. I was a sprinter, it, it, uh, sports. Right? Like, it's all about sports. So, so, uh, but I remember I made the Southern California All-Star team, and the coach called me and con con to, sorry, congratulate me. He said, we're going to take on the North. It's going to be in a month. We're going to kick their butt, blah, blah, blah. And I was on the phone, I, and he just hung up. He hung up and I hung up. And two days later, the roster of the team came out and I wasn't on the team. I just wasn't there. I think he, he told the coach that I let the, down the phone I wasn't respectful and I didn't uh, uh, appreciate the situation that was handed to me. <sighs> um, also in high school, my senior year, this is how good of a high school was, Laguna Beach High School, senior year we had something called popcorn reading, where a, like a person would read a paragraph and then would popcorn the next person to read. I was popcorned every other time. So I would read a paragraph, I would popcorn a kid, that kid would popcorn me back. I would popcorn with somebody else who I would hope to God wouldn't popcorn me, they would popcorn me back. Stutters, though, are innovative. So what I did there was I snuck into that English classroom after school one day. I took all the out loud, stupid popcorn reading books. I hid them behind the furnace all of them, and the next day Mrs. Roach came in the classroom and said, oh, we're gonna do popcorn reading, and the books weren't there. She said, where are the books? I have no idea. Uh, but, but, but the point of that story is that, that I wasn't accepting my stutter. I was, I was, sorry, coping with my stutter. I was coping with it. 
and 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 I began to use it as a you know sorry Tom Foley's in the room a pebble in my shoe, right? But and it was a enormous chip on my shoulder. I had to get straight A's because of my stutter. I had to be the best athlete because of my stutter. I had to be the strongest guy in the weight room because of my stutter. I had to make it like a football team at Yale because of my stutter. But I was not accepting it. And that can be suffocating, suffocating. The world, the, the weight of the world is, is on your shoulders. And Muhammad Ali said, it's not the mountain ahead of you that's going to kill you. It's the pebble in your shoe. Right? And the pebble I had was a large pebble, and it was getting bigger and bigger. Um, so I, I go and I play football at Yale, and, and uh, coming to the end of my college, or <laughs> this is a funny story too, like I'm in college and I don't want to stutter, and I'm a, what's called, because Eric said it, in the closet stutter, right? Like everyone knows I stutter, and, and I know everyone knows I stutter, but we don't talk about it, and I pretend like, it, like I'm not stuttering. But I invented my own language at Yale. And because when you sing, you don't stutter. So I had everybody at Yale, after about a month or two, speaking like this. Let's go to the bar, Emma. Let's go to the library. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all the athletes at Yale were speaking like that. This is freaking sweet, Emma. You know, I like add to Emma. And so we had like, I don't know, you're here, Alicia, we must, I, I mean, like, like th that's how like, uh, w like, we all spoke, it became this thing. So again, like, I'm, I'm coping, I'm not embracing. Um, when I got out of Yale, I, I had never raised, so in high school and in college, I had never actually raised my hand to ask a question. Like, I would come in the room, I'd be loud, I'd be obnoxious, I'd be misunderstood, underestimated, but I would never put up my hand and ask a question. And, and if I had to do that, I would absolutely crumble, right? On the field, I wanted the ball, but when I was in life, I didn't want anything to do with the ball. Like, I avoid the ball like the plague. Um, uh, so then after that, oh, and then speaking of Carolyn's story, <laughs> okay, yes, I, like, I was not cut out to, to be an investment banker, that's true, but some of these jobs I should have got, or at least I still think I should have. <laughs> and I would get on the train, and I would call my girlfriend, who's now my wife, and I would tell her to break up with me. I would say, you have to break up with me. I am not going to amount to anything. You have to just end this. It's never going to work. And that's probably a pretty unusual phone call for a girlfriend to get from her boyfriend. And, and, and she then, now, always has stuck by me and been my rock and been the rock for our family and our families through north. All right, so with the help of a lot of people in this room, I, I get into MIT. And again, I had never put up my hand in my life to ask a question. And the CEO of the century of, uh, sorry, General Electric, uh, Jack Welch is coming to speak at MIT, and he has a stutter. And there's 1,500 people in the room, and it's on the news, and CBS is feeling blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to ask a question. So he does this thing. I put up my hand. The dean, you know, is looking at the light, so he, so he sorry, uh, couldn't really see who asked the question. He called on me, and then all of a sudden, he really called on me. He's like, no, he went, it went that way. And the guy came to the mic, and I grabbed the mic. I just grabbed the mic. And I went, eh! And you could hear a pin drop in that room. You could have cut the tension with a knife. It was thick. And I finally asked my question, how'd you get the CEO of G with the stutter? And he, he told me the story about how his mom, when he was a kid, told him that his brain thought too fast for his tongue. And so he viewed it as a 
superpower. It was a superpower. He was smarter than everybody else. It was his, his, his perspective. And then he said, and I'm not 6'2 with a full head of hair. And the tension is so, so thick. And I yelled out, I am 6'2 with a full head of hair. And the 1500 place just erupted. Rah! And I, and he said, you got to, uh, sorry, come down here. You got to come down here. I gave him a hug. We went on to lunch, and he became a friend and a mentor. And, and uh, oh, this is another story. And then actually, uh, so, t t uh, sorry, two weeks later, he's being interviewed on CNN by that guy, English guy. Uh, 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 Piers. Morgan. And so here's Morgan asking about his stutter. And he tells him about his brain, thinks too fast for his tongue, and blah, blah, blah. And it's about his perspective. It was a superpower. And then here's Morgan goes on to like another thing. And he's like, oh, Piers, 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 I got to tell you a story. Two weeks ago, I was at MIT, and this kid, he got up there, and he, ah, 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 ah. OK, it wasn't that bad, Jack. It, 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 and, and, and then I said, I'm not 6'2 with a full head of hair. He had that 6'2 full head of hair, and now we're friends. This kid's the best kid ever. So I came out of the closet that day. I was out. And, and, and. Uh, step one, it was in high school. I got the Fs, and I could be in good the world and get straight S, or be in good the world and get straight A's. And step two now, right, instead of constantly Sorry, Curtis. Uh, uh, I my stutter. I started to own my stutter. <sighs> Another thing I learned from from Jack Welch is that stutters are survivors, and stutters have a sixth sense about others. Um, you spend a lot of time as a stutterer not speaking in rooms and reading people and getting to understand people and, and, and who's a good person and who perhaps is not such a good person. And every single person in this room who I invited, which I think is you know, probably like 80%, um, uh, 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 is here because you have Embrace me. You have supported me. You have loved me, um, which leads me to step three. Um, I was sitting here a few years ago at the AIS gala, and I talked about the video. I didn't watch the video beforehand. I probably should have. And I saw the iceberg of the stutter. And up top is the stutter, and then underneath is the anxiety and the shame and the depression and the guilt. And all of a sudden, I was sitting in a chair just like you are. I just started to cry. I just started to cry. And 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 the infantilization. Say that five times fast with the stutter. It, it it but but the it, and 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 the no expectations and the high school. Uh, sorry, guidance counselor. It's just made sense. And I think the best thing about all the people in this room, right, that are here is that you expect something of me. You see my potential even if I don't. And you expect me to reach that potential. And so now... In the past, I would wake up with this pit in my stomach that the world thinks I'm stupid, the world hates me, and I have to, and I have to prove them wrong. It's now I have to come through for my friends. I have to come through for my family. I have to come through for my wife. I have to come through for my kids. And I have to show them the, the, the way, how to take on bullies, how to fight, how to be sorry, courageous, how to get up in front of a room of 420 people with a stutter and talk. And, and, and that that's what inspires me now. There's a saying, which is in here somewhere. A person is a person only because of their people. 
you guys in this room, especially my family and my wife and kids, you guys are my people, and I am your people, and and I am so incredibly grateful and 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 blessed to be your people. I am because you are. And for that, I th thank you very much and I love you very much. Thank you.